Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features a sort of an unboxing. Really what's going on here is that I was in the USA uh, for about a week and a half. I'm just back today and always when I go to the US on this occasion I was going uh, to a wedding in Michigan. I like to uh, go to the local comic shops or the ones that I can get to and uh, see what's in those back issue long boxes and it was no different this trip except that I want to share with you what I found in the back issue boxes and my choices were determined by obviously issues I don't have in my own collection but also issues that I feel that you might enjoy me reviewing in the future on the channel. So there has been a few requests to uh, review uh, New Mutants comics and so I'm working on uh, putting together a little collection of those. I remember when these uh, particular issues you see here on screen were highly priced in the back issue market. So they've really come down in price now almost, uh, well, 30 years later. So a nice uh, couple of issues from the Extinction Agenda with the Rob Liefeld covers. What I'm going to do is I've got quite a few of these back issues. I don't know exactly how many, but certainly over 50, maybe 60 of them. So I'm going to go through them quite quickly because I don't want a very long video here, but I'm hoping that it might spark a little nostalgia uh, for you, for viewers of the channel, maybe spark you into going back into your, your own long boxes and seeing, do you have these issues in your own collection? So here we go, we, uh, issue 96 and 97 of New Mutants, and I will move on with what else I picked up on my trip. So here we've got issue 100. That's a pretty famous one, very high selling as well. I think that one sold a million copies. And let's see what else I have. So X-Force, issue 11 there uh, with Deadpool on the cover. Again, this used to be a high priced issue for a while. Uh, let's see what else I have here. So I've got X-Force number 12. I've got X-Force number uh, 13 there with the Mark Pacella cover. I've got X-Force number 14, which was the very first issue by, on the regular title by Greg Capullo. He'd done some work on the X-Force annual um, a few months earlier, X-Force annual number one. And um, then I wasn't able to pick up X-Force 15. That's the one that features uh, Cable versus Deadpool. I think that one must have been uh, sold out or at least uh, collectible due to the recent movie featuring both characters but I really need to get my hands on that for review for the channel. I've already reviewed issues 16, 17 and 18 part of the Executioner's Song. I have 19, issue 19 already but I picked up issue 20. So another great Greg Capullo cover there. Issue 21. See that there. Issue 22. I like that cover, that's a pretty cool one. And I like this one too, issue number 23. It's a very cool shot of Domino there. And 24, nice as well. And then 25, so that's a wraparound cover. There we go, 26 and 27 and that's the last of the Greg Capullo issues of X-Force. So what else did I pick up? Well, moving on, I picked up issues of X-Factor. So X-Factor number eight, that's a Mark Silvestri cover. Issue uh, nine there, another Mark Silvestri cover and this is before obviously he came on Uncanny X-Men with issue 218. And that's inked by Joe, uh, Joseph Rubenstein, or Stein. Let's see, I've got issue 10. And this is the Marvel 20th, 25th anniversary, rather, uh, um, border for this particular cover. I like it. Actually, what I really want is I want all of the issues that have this uh, 25th anniversary border to them. X-Factor number... 11, that's a really great Walter Simonson cover there. 12, 13, 
another cool Simonson cover of Jean Grey in her various different guises. Although that looks a little bit like Madeline Pryor there. I haven't read this issue before, um, so I'm not sure what's inside it, but I'll get to it in a due course. I picked up issue 21. That kind of cover is very reminiscent for me of the kind of things that Simonson was doing on Thor. Same again here with the cover to 22. Look at that giant hand and the foreshortening. Very Kirby-esque. 23. 25. Now I need 24, but 24 is a difficult one to get because it's the first appearance of Archangel. That is Apocalypse's twisting of Angel. So that's a little tougher to get one's hands on, but I will in the future, I hope. Here we have the cover to 26 or issue 26. I like that, that's nice. Uh, 27, it's kind of a fun cover. Looks like it's a Christmas issue maybe. 28. And then jumping forward to 35. That's the Orphan Maker. Let's see here. 36. This is very cool. Simonson cover. The beginning of Inferno or a prologue to Inferno here. And I like the way that these demons have um, kind of wrecked the corner box there. That's really nice. 37. That's a very cool cover of Madeline as the Goblin Queen. And I'm going to re-review Inferno with all of the crossover parts. That's a plan of mine. Here we have the cover to 38. And then the cover to 39. And that's what I picked up in terms of X Factor. So what else did I get my hands on? Let's move this up here. Well, Wolverine. So issue number three, that is a John Bushima cover. Very, very nice. Inked by Al Williamson, I think. Yes, and then issue five, again, John Bushima inked by Al Williamson. And then jumping way ahead, I never had these issues and I always wanted them, really, really wanted them back in the day, uh, Wolverine 51. So it's an Andy Kubert cover, penciled and inked by Kubert, but the interior is by Mark Silvestri. And it's the first part of a three-part storyline by Sylvester and Hama, The Crunch Conundrum. So I've recently started reviewing the Sylvester Hama run and uh, my uh, pickups on this particular back issue hunting trip I now have completed. I have all of those issues by Sylvester and Hama, so I'm very pleased about that. Here's the cover to 52. It's a nice one. And... 53 and you can really see here with this cover to 53 Sylvester and Green responding to the popularity of Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld and that cross hatching style so we've got very clear cross hatching going on um, on the art there then I picked up issue 55 as well now I already have this um, but I wanted a nice clean copy for my collection 56, I also have in my collection, but I wanted a nice copy, and this is a nice copy, so I decided I have to pick this up. And then, moving into the Teixeira run on the title, issue 61. 62, Wolverine versus Sabretooth. 63. That's a nice cover. 64. The interior of this one is Mark Pacella inked by Dan Panosian. And then 66. I have this 
issue already, but I wanted a nicer copy for my collection. And 68. And that means that I have all of the Hama Teixeira Wolverine issues as well. So very pleased about that. So Wolverine there versus Amiga Red. And then to finish out what I picked up on my trip, classic X-Men number 13, very nice cover there, featuring Phoenix and Fire Lord by Art Adams, inked by Al Williamson. Interesting to see Adams inked by Williamson there. Issue 18, very nice Magneto cover. That's Arthur Adams inked by Terry Austin. The classic X-Men number 31, great Steve Lytle cover. Ooh, did it out of order, but I also picked up 29. So all I need now for the Cochrane burn uh, issues of classic X-Men is 16 and 17 to complete a collection from 1 to 44. I also picked up X-Men Alpha Flight number one. I need number two. And then coming to the end now, picked up Punisher War Journal issue number four. That's a very nice copy of it as well as issue 12. So I almost have all the Jim Lee issues of Punisher War Journal now. I think I'm only missing one to three and five. And then finally, Ghost Rider at number 30. So I recently picked up issues one to 25. I already have 26 and I'm working on uh, completing the Andy Kubert run on Ghost Rider as well. So I do hope that you enjoyed this little insight into what I picked up on my US trip in terms of back issue hunting. I couldn't even tell you how many issues that was. Any of you out there uh, who were paying attention and counting as we were going along might um, reveal in the comments section how many I actually went through there. But you can expect me to review and uh, go through these issues uh, down the road later on in the summer I would expect. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it on YouTube. It really helps the channel. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content like this.